الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continuing on in our study of سورة القدر. Some fawaid that Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, حفظ الله تعالى, he mentioned with regards to uh, the verse, the first verse, إِنَّا أَنْزَلْنَهُ فِي لَيْلَةُ القدر. He says, half of Allah Ta'ala, he mentions that the Qur'an, as is well known, was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in stages in accordance with uh, specific events and particular situations from the time that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent him until his death Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived 23 years as a Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam uh, 13 of those years in Mecca and 10 years in Medina and over this period of time the Quran was revealed to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which was revealed uh, with the various ahkam and details regarding the religion. Then, the Sheikh mentioned the importance regarding benefiting during uh, the holy month of Ramadan and this is one of the things that we left off in the last uh, sitting with regards to the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا ذُرَاكُمَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفْ شَهْرِ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months that there are many fawaid there and in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal man qama laylat al-qadr imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhimbihi Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever uh, worships or does their ibadah, you know, stands in prayer, Laylatul Qadr, on the night of, uh, of decree or the night of power, with full, uh, full belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expecting his reward in his ajr and believing in all that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and believing in their uh, Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will forgive him for his previous sins and this was the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make ittikaf you know to 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 take time out and be alone in the masjid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this took place during the last 10 uh, nights of Ramadan. And some of the fada'il or benefits of that, of that, uh, that night meaning Laylatul Qadr, that Sheikh Salim ibn Hosein mentions, he says first, Sammaha Allah Laylatul Qadr, wa Sammaha Laylatul Mubarak, Mubaraka, fahada yudullu ala fadliha. So he said the first benefit is that Allah called it the night of power, the night of decree, and also he called it Laylatul Mubaraka in another ayat you know, the blessed night. So this is evidence of the benefit of that 
that night, that night, the night of power. The second thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also emphasized in the ayah, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what will make you know, what will make you come to know what the, uh, the night of power is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is emphasizing the importance of that late of, of that of that night this 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 very important night building it up there and letting us know and through this emphasis it lets us know what that there's great fadl there's great blessing and may Allah bless us to to be worshiping him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone during the Laylatul Qadr Amin. The third thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that it's better than a thousand months of ibadah. And so this also lets us know what? The fadl of Laylatul Qadr, the benefit of Laylatul Qadr. And the fourth thing, tanazzalu al malaikatu ruhu fiha. That the angels descend and the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam come down and descend during this time, during this night and witness the deeds of the Muslimin and witness the Masajid and give assistance. So this should strengthen a person's resolve to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed night. The fifth benefit he mentions is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, describes the night, the Laylatul Qadr, as salam. He said, salamun hiya hatta matla il fajr. And that uh, there is peacefulness that descends until the, until the dawn. And when Fajr comes in, that means it's the end of the evening. So this also illustrates for us the great benefit during that time. That's a time of great peace and sakina if you strive to do so. But if you move away from, from the emir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and don't take advantage of that night, by maybe watching movies, uh, going, unfortunately, some of our brothers and sisters uh, do all various types of muharramat, drinking, smoking weed, staying up, going to nightclubs. This happens. So those people have illustrated their jahl, their ignorance of the benefit of this great night. And they let their shahwa, their desires, overcome them instead of their iman. They let their shahwa and their desires overtake their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their clarity in the basira and the salam that they could achieve, the peacefulness of that night, that great night of ibadah and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not something that's far-fetched as there are so many examples and many of us probably know, especially when we live in the West and, and in non-Muslim countries where the societies are very open and it's, there's a lots of opportunity to do the muharramat, then we know individuals or perhaps we have made toba ourselves from activities that we used to do. So in the importance here is that we should strive our best to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have our, to seek forgiveness from Him, to seek His aid and assistance, to make supplication for the Muslims, our brothers and sisters in Islam, who don't have what we have, who don't have the same, who maybe suffer from oppression, like our brothers and sisters in China, who are constantly being oppressed 
by the government there. Or perhaps our brothers and sisters in Burma or our brothers and sisters in the Central African Republic or our brothers and sisters in Congo, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria who are also dealing with the sectarian strife and the hardship and persecution. And our brothers and sisters in Syria and Iraq who have no peace and stability. On one hand, they are being attacked and slaughtered by people who say they're doing something in the name of Islam, say they're establishing a Khalifa, but instead they're just making refugees around the world. And when they come upon Muslim peoples, they frighten them to either join them or they kill them and make takfir of them. So they're faced with this and then they're faced with the onslaught of the Shia like Hezbollah and the various satanic groups in Iraq that attack Ahl Sunnah and kill Ahl Sunnah and oppress Ahl Sunnah. And likewise, they're attacked by Hizb al -Bath, like in Syria and other places. So the fact that you live in peace and stability and can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really benefit from this time without worrying about a, a bomb going off in your masjid, without worrying about getting sniped on the way or your mother or your father or your, your daughter or your sister or your wife being killed or taken by force, then this is a great ni'mah. So that's why you, we should take this time to remember our brothers and sisters and supplicate for our families and supplicate on their behalf and supplicate for them and supplicate for the Muslims in general. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself self and the shaitan. And that ends our study of the surah, something very brief. And may Allah put it on our scale of good deeds and not have it on the scale of bad deeds against us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.